Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Zee Kun, a PhD student from UIUC. And today, I'm going to talk about uh, the real-world adversarial attacks on machine learning-based wireless systems. This is a joint work with my colleague Chao Ming, Emerson, Gungan Deep, and my advisor, Deepak. So machine learning has enabled many key features in wireless systems and has gained a lot of interest in both industry and, and, and academia. Let me give you some examples. For example, in communication domain, we've seen a lot of papers published in top conferences, leveraging machine learning for channel prediction, spectrum assignment, beam alignment, so on and so forth. And industry also started to leverage machine learning for the applications, such as beamforming. On the other hand, we have also seen a lot of applications in sensing domain, such as ML-based localization, autonomous driving, to name a few. So, all of these machine learning driven applications are telling us that leveraging machine learning can deliver better performance. Its reliability is still an unsolved problem. In fact, past works have already shown us that machine learning models are vulnerable to attacks. Let me give you a simple example here. This is an image of a panda. And if you feed this panda image into the neural network, it will correctly classify it as a panda easily. Now, let's add a little bit of amount of noise onto this image. Note that this noise is carefully crafted and is invisible to human eyes. And the result image still looks like a panda, but if you fit this into the neural network, it, this time it will be predicted as a dog. So in fact, this is one of the most typical attacks in neural networks, and it is called adversarial attacks. Passwords have already shown a lot of interest in disrupting machine learning models like this. Here, we also got an important question, which is that what if we can do this in machine learning wireless systems? Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Imagine there's a base station augmented with machine learning model to conduct the user location prediction by sensing the environment. What we want to do here is to design a simple attacker that can transmit a small amount of noise that will completely disrupt this machine learning model prediction so the user location will be predicted wrongly. Imagine we apply such attacks on autonomous driving, which has already been deployed in the industry. This will lead to threat to human safety and economic loss. We also apply such attacks on communication domains, and it will severely damage the communication quality and will lead to threat to time-sensitive applications such as 5G remote surgery. While those infrastructures are critical infrastructures, and we do not want to risk such infrastructures, and we cannot afford the consequences of such risks. However, in this talk, I'm going to show you that this risk is actually real. A single antenna attacker transmitting 20 times less power than the client can disrupt the machine learning based wireless system completely. We present Rafa radio frequency attack, which is the first real world attack on machine learning based wireless systems. Rafa can administer attacks without any coordination or synchronization with the base station or client. And we conduct hardware driven experiments against state of the art systems in both communication and sensing domain. Of course, we don't want to just talk about attacks. We also want to mention that there's a ways to avoid such attacks and potentially improve the robustness of the model. So let's get started by talking about the problem setup. So traditionally, if you want to train a neural network, what you want to do here is you want to collect a data set comprises inputs such as images and a bunch of labels. And you can just fit this image into your neural network, which will give you the correct output easily. And a well-trained neural network can easily achieve more than 90% of the accuracy. Uh, in wireless systems, things just get a little bit different because most of the machine learning-based wireless systems adopt wireless channel as their input. And wireless channels are nothing but the estimation of the surrounding wireless environment. And now, this time, the output or the prediction of the neural network becomes uh, user locations, modulation scheme, to name a few. And what we want to do here is to transmit this adversarial noise signal so it will get superimposed with the input to the neural network, and the prediction will get disrupted. Our attacker has the following goals. First, we want it to be coordination free, meaning that we do not want, to want our attacker to coordinate with either base engine or the client. 
Secondly, we want our attacker to transmit at a very low power such that it won't get detected easily. Note that this, this fundamentally differ our technique from the jamming attack, which adopts very high power to jam the entire spectrum. Finally, our attack has very low complexity because we want it to be generalizable and universal when it actually gets deployed. So recall that the input to the neural network now becomes user wireless channel, which can be denoted as H, plus the adversarial noise signal, which can be denoted as N. And how traditional adversarial algorithms works looks like this. So you add this adversarial noise N onto the input H. You fit this H plus N into your neural network model. It will compute the loss function. And if this loss is above the threshold, then we find the satisfying loss factor that we want. It is, if it is lower than this threshold, then we conduct gradient ascent instead of gradient descent that we use in the normal training process. So that you can update this adversarial noise N through the direction of increase the, the, norm, the loss. This algorithm has two requirements. First, N is designed to be specific to the input edge. So we need to know this channel edge in order to run the algorithm. Secondly, we need to add exactly n to the input. A little bit of distortion will completely disrupt this process and make your attack fail. These requirements, however, are hard to achieve and lead to challenges that are specific to wireless domains. The first challenge is that the attacker doesn't know this client channel edge. Because this wireless channel is measured during the communication between the client and base station themselves the attacker locates at a different location. So what makes things worse is that this channel actually will change over time. So how can we design N without knowing H? Our idea is to design N that works for all possible edge in the environment. Record that this is the original flow of a traditional algorithm that each noise is crafted for a specific edge. What we propose here is to sample edge from the environment at every iteration. Because attacker could collect the data set by sniffing the surrounding wireless channel in the same environment as the base station. And we compute the average loss across all the edge we collected in the environment. We make it more challenging for the attacker to find a good noise, but once we find it, it can be applied to a variety of edge. This is actually inspired by a previous algorithm called the UAP, Universal Adversarial Perturbation. The second challenge is that the attacker's noise will get distorted when it actually gets transmitted. And when it reaches the base station, it will no longer be N, but N prime. Remember that we've worked so hard to create a universal perturbation. So if it is get distorted, it, it will no longer work. This distortion, this distortion is triggered by two factors. The first factor is the channel distortion of the attacker itself. Because when the attacker transmits this noise, this noise would go through the wireless environment and get distorted by its own wireless channel, which can be, which can be de denoted as HA. The second factor is due to the lack of synchronization. Normally, when client trans transmits data to the base station, it not only just simply transmits the data symbol, but also a preamble attached in front of it. So the base station can extract the wireless channel by analyzing the distortion happening in this preamble. Since this wireless channel solely relies on this preamble distortion, we only want to attack the preamble in our scenario. So now our attacker joined the game and starts to transmit this adversarial noise N. And we designed this noise N to have the same length as the preamble. So ideally, what we want is that we want our attacker to know exactly when the client is going to transmit. But in reality, because we remember we are coordination free, we do not want to coordinate with the base station or the client, so there will always be a sample misalignment, third RT. So with this third RT, your noise N will just fail to cover the entire region of the P so that your noise will get distorted. So to summarize, with these two factors, channel distortion, asynchronization. If you transmit this adversarial noise, it will get distorted by these two factors, and your attacks will fail in the end. In order to deal with the issue, our idea is to design noise that is robust to these effects. 
And what we want to do here is to model these effects mathematically into transformation functions. For the first effect, which is channel distortion, this can be modeled as the received signal n prime is equal to n times the channel distortion HA. Note that this HA is not random variable, but can be actually accurately obtained by the attacker. We leverage the fact that Bastion frequently transmits data symbol to the client, and it also attaches the preamble in front of this data symbol, so that our attacker can sniff this information and just estimate this HA using this uh, preamble information. And we can leverage the reciprocity to get the attacker's channel in another direction. For the second issue, remember this is caused by the sample misalignment density. In order to make the modeling feasible, we send noise repeatedly in order to cover the entire region of the preamble. Now, what best it receives becomes the preamble P plus a cyclic shift version of this noise N. This immediately reminds us of the principle of FFT, which is the shift in the time domain equals to the phase shift in the frequency domain. So we can apply a noise shift, uh, uh, apply a phase shift into our formula here. So far, we have mathematically analyzed the transformations and obtained such formula. Note that there are many other factors such as CFO, hardware noise, that I'm not gonna cover here, but we we'll encourage uh, audience to refer to our papers for more details. So in this formula, attacker's channel can be accurately, accurately obtained. And that 30 here, uh, it, which is a random variable because we have no control over the misalignment. We sample many, many density in order to get a lot of different transformations to make sure that our noise is actually robust to varieties of situations. We use this transformation function to design what we call robust wireless UAP. So this is based on the UAP algorithms and we combine domain-specific wireless knowledge into it. And our idea is to add this transformation block while updating the noise vector that will try different transformations on the, on the noise vector because attackers this time can see a lot of different transformations during the adversarial algorithms, the attacker now will identify uh, a noise vector that is robust to these transformations. So we find out that with this robust wireless UAP, we managed to cause error at the base station in spite of not knowing the channel value and in spite of the distortion. So now I've uh, covered the major algorithm of Rafa, now I will talk about our hardware-driven experiments and my, our results. First, I will talk about our hardware, uh, attacker hardware design. It consists of a single antenna, a USRP, and a router. This is, note that this is a single antenna design and we transmit 20 times less power compared to the client. And we during our deployment, we placed our client at 16 different locations showing on the blue dots here and we place our custom base station at the yellow triangle and the attacker at the red star. Our base station is running machine learning models in real time and we attack them in the real world. So first, I will show you the results where we use Rafa to attack a machine learning based communication system called FIRE. FIRE attacks the wireless channel's input to predict the wireless channel in another frequency. And also claim that FIRE can improve this SNR by 5 dB compared to non-ML-based technique. Now, let's see how Rafa can bring this performance down. The x-axis shows here is the channel SNR drop, which can be understood as the FIRE accuracy drop. And the y-axis here is the CDF value. So let's start by first adding some random Gaussian noise. So it causes some performance drop, but not a lot. Rafa, on the other hand, can cause much severe performance drop of 4.06 dB and up to 7 dB on 90s percentile. In our community, we spend a lot of time in improving the channel SNR, um, in improving the channel quality. Even fire can only get only 5 dB gain. So all of this gain is taken away by a single antenna and low power attacker, even though the best station only has four antennas. To highlight the benefit of our transformation modeling, we also compare Rafa to Valina UAP as shown on the orange line here. So Valina UAP performs similar to the Gaussian noise as you can, show in, as you can see on the figure. This is because all of this, uh, all of this structure noise get, disrupted, uh, get 
destructed because of the, get destroyed because of the channel distortion. So next, I will talk about the results on attacking DLock, which is a machine learning based wireless sensing system. It takes the wireless channel as input to predict the user location information. And DLock can improve the accuracy by 0.5 meters compared to traditional algorithms. So now let's see how Rafa can bring this performance down. The X axis shows the localization accuracy drop, and the Y axis shows the CDF value. As previously, we also show the Rafa performance compared to two of our baselines. And Rafa can increase this D-log localization error by 0.7 meters, and can achieve nearly three meters at 90th percentile. So if you are using this system for autonomous driving, then your car is basically predicted in another, in another lane. So of course, we don't want to frighten you, and we don't want to argue that machine learning systems shouldn't be used in wireless systems. And let me talk about some initial work on how to improve the robustness of the model. So normally, how machine learning, model, how machine learning designers deploy a model works like they train their models using their collected data set, then they just directly deploy this in the real world. And there are many times and situations they will just face some uh, random problems. What we want to propose to machine learning designers is to ask whether the model is trustworthy or not during the training phase. And this question can be answered by Rafa. If the answer is no, we can use adversarial examples generated by Rafa and put these examples into the training data set to improve the robustness. So in this result, I want to show you the robustness training results on fire using Rafa as a attacker. The y-axis shows here is the channel SNR, and the orange bar shows here is the fire original performance without suffering from any kind of attack. Next, the yellow bar shows here is the dropped accuracy when Rafa attacks fire. On the other hand, if you train this model in a robustness way, you can recover some of the dropped accuracy as shown in the green bar. We also find that when there is no attack, the robust model performs as well as the original model. This shows some promise for designing robust ML in wireless systems. Of course, we encourage the community to explore more in this direction. So I want, to conclude this, uh, I want to conclude my talk by saying that we designed the first reward out of zero attacks on machine learning based wireless systems. And our hope is that machine learning designers will take this into consideration when they deploy their models in the real world. And uh, yeah, that concludes my talk and I'm willing to take any questions. Thanks.